In our final video, we're just going to work with the um, finish up the collisions and, and get this working correctly. So um, you'll notice actually if these things see if the um, if they move, like if I just leave the smiley face there, and if they they do actually hit it, you'll notice everything's pushing everything else around, which is because they've been added as physics bodies, they now um, interact with each other. So okay. We're not actually going to make use of that in, the, in uh, for Tiny Game here, but just know it is a useful thing that uh, the physics engine can do for you and, and might be relevant for games that you want to make in the future. All right, so uh, back to the code here. Let's actually see now if we're detecting this, this collision here. So let's see if we're printing collide on a collision. So I'm going to come back, restart it, and then let's just try get, say, one or two collisions to occur. Okay, that, that should have done it. Okay, and in the output, yeah, we're definitely printing out collide when when a collision occurs. So, so that's great. What uh, what we want to do though is actually say um, when, when the collision occurs, rather than just printing collision, we want something else to happen. So, and actually, what what we'll say is let's just say happy you the graphic. A colon. Notice I've used a colon here, not a, not a dot. I'm going to say remove self. Open close round brackets. Save that. Come back. One. Start it again. And okay, what happened then? Now, what's happening is we have the, um, the smiley face just doesn't doesn't seem to be appearing. What's actually happening is at the moment. Whenever these two collide, like basically when any of the three the three parties, let me just um, comment that out. By the way, the, the two dashes mean means a comment, so now this won't be read by the computer. And actually, we'll add some comments at the end and talk about those. So, happy remove self. Okay, here's our our three three people on the screen, and at the moment we're detecting any collision, any collision that that occurs at all. But we actually we don't want to detect collisions between the two. Uh, angry faces. If they collide with each other, then so what? It 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 just doesn't matter, and we don't want to respond. We want to isolate it so that we are only detecting collisions between the smiley face and either of the angry faces. But at the moment, it, it's if these two collide, then that's been detected as a collision, and and we we don't want that. So to fix that, what we're actually going to do is say let's make let's leave happy as a dynamic body. But let's change angry and angry two to static. Okay, changing them to static, and we'll bring back our uh, happy remove self line too. And actually, I'm going to comment out the the print. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, so come back to the simulator. All right, that's looking a bit better. So now, actually, that, that that's working, um, working better. When, only when, the uh, the smiley face collides, are we going to see the remove self? And and all re remove self does is actually removes the the happy uh, display object um, from the screen there. So great. So we're actually done in terms of um, the game we wanted to create. Just want to talk a little bit more about. Um, the dynamic and static, and because we just changed angry and angry two from dynamic to static. If you want a collision, we could make. Let's just see what happens if we make happy static. Now, if this occurs, so save that and, and run it. If that happens, we're not going to detect any collisions. So at least one of the bodies has to be dynamic for the these collision to be detected. So what we do is we make happy dynamic. But leave um, angry and angry to a static because we don't want these guys to, to for the collision to be detected between each other. So the, now we've got it. So a collision between a dynamic and a static body will be registered here by this on collision function, but a collision between a static, static and a static body will not activate this on collision function. Okay. Um, lastly, be probably a, a good idea just to. Um, Add some comments now. Comments are just um, notes, and it's especially useful if you're working as part of a team. So here, I'm just going to say, set up 
graphics. And again, so you put the two dashes and it just means this line, it's just for humans to read. It's going to be ignored by the computer. So that's setting up the graphics. Uh, I'm going to put in another comment here. Respond to touch events. Now, when you're learning, it's probably good to put in more comments rather than less. As you um, improve, generally, uh, um, and it depends again, if you're working as part of a team, then it, it's really important to comment stuff. If you're just working by yourself and, and you're comfortable, then perhaps it's not so important. Um, create angry movement. It's probably not the best comment, most accurate, but anyway. And here we want to say respond, or we could say detect respond to collisions. Okay, so we, we've given at least some indication of, of what's going on where. Okay, so I hope this has been um, been useful. Uh, again, I, I suppose that the next thing, where to go from here would be perhaps make it work for several different devices or, um, well, I mean, you can change it however, however you like, but um, I hope you found it useful and um, that everything was explained to your satisfaction. Um, again, I, I suppose here one of the main things was just that you had you know, you have, you have different events and you, you write um, functions to respond to them. Uh, you can also have your own function that you call, just with a, the name of the function there underneath it. And um, so we've got a slight difference. There's, there's different kinds of functions. Remember, we've got the if statement, which checks if, if something is true or not. Um, really, really useful. One thing I see here should mention is we've got angry and we, we've got angry too what about if we wanted to have 10 or, or, or 50 of these um, angry faces on there well you know imagine having to, to copy and paste as we have angry 3 angry 4 angry 5 angry 6 and, and going on and on and on that's really not good as soon as you start to get a, a group of objects what you really want to be doing is creating a table or what's often known as in other languages as an array and that allow you, it's so much more powerful. It, it lets you create this, this group. And then and then even here, you know, we, we've got this repetitive code here in the move angry function we've got. We're saying, you know, do this here, do this here, to, to angry and to angry too. And then, you know, imagine if we had 10 of them, we'd need 10 of these. And when you start using tables or arrays, it means you just have to do everything once, okay? So much more powerful. It, there is a fair bit more setup and, and conceptually creating a table is, is a bit more complicated and you also have to use loops, um, while or for loops to sort of iterate over and it, 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 the complexity increases and, and for tiny game and if you're a beginner, um, it, it, it's better to leave them out to begin with but, but just know that pretty quickly you want to you start learning about tables and, and how to use iteration to, to, to traverse tables and, and, and create groups of objects and eventually becomes much, much more powerful and, and actually decreases the amount of work you've got to do substantially. But the learning curve for learning them is, is a little bit more complicated. And I, I will have a, a video series um, coming up which uh, is going to show how to use tables. Anyway, I hope you found this useful and, and good luck. And uh, yeah, I, I strongly encourage you to keep going with Corona. It's, it's really fun. Okay, thanks.